All right, you're still listening on Blog Talk Radio. We lost our Facebook feed. We're going to try to connect and bring John back in just a second. But you're listening to the Unstoppable Story Show with Terrence Leftridge on Blog Talk Radio. Live radio, I guess it was get, the conversation was getting so hot that it was burning down some of our, our feed. So we are coming back, coming back, coming back coming back so stay with us we're gonna play a commercial for our audience while we go ahead and connect with the feed for john garcia you are listening to the unstoppable story show with terrence leftridge with our guest john garcia we'll be back in just a couple of minutes Story, then the Unstoppable Story Show is looking for you. Email us at Terrence at UnstoppableCoaching.com to get an interview for your Unstoppable, the Unstoppable Story Show with Terrence Lefteridge. Ordinary people, Unstoppable Story. Yes, indeed. That's right. If you are looking to share your Unstoppable Story with me, you can reach out to me. Go to my website, unstoppablecoaching.com, unstoppablecoaching.com. Go scroll down and you'll see the, the sign that says hashtag tell your story. We've got a great book coming out in 2018. It's called You Are Unstoppable. It's the series and we are talking about moving from past to purpose. And John knows a little bit about moving from past to purpose. He is trying to get connect back on. He's coming in, coming in. Hey, John, mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. And one, two on my end. Can you All hear me? All right, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I was telling my audience just on Blog point. Talk Radio that the conversation was getting so hot that the devil just tried to jump in and take us out. But you know what the show it's, says. Just, it's just another mountain. Just, just another, another mountain, mountain, and we we'll are over. unstoppable. Yes, indeed. We were about to get into your story to really tell them the backstory. Because what we do here at the Unstoppable Story Show, we, we know where you are, but we want to talk about where you were. Because there's a young John Garcia out there, uh, maybe in Texas, maybe here in Chicago, maybe listening to us uh, via the internet on blogtalkradio.com that is, is struggling. Maybe they're going through cancer for the first time. Maybe they're getting out of the Air Force. Maybe they are turning 18 and trying to figure out what they should do with their life. And because they hear something that you say tonight, John, that's going to help them get unstuck and become unstoppable. So if you would, could you take a moment and just talk to us? Tell us your story of how you got to where you are now. Oh, thank you, Terrence. I, I will do that. And in order to tell that story, I have to go to the beginning. And in the beginning, after I was growing up, I was actually working out in the farm fields for 45 cents an hour, 12 hours a day in the hot sun. It was not where I wanted to be. Everybody has a place that they're at and a place that they want to be and a place that they're trying to get out of. For me, that was the place I wanted to get out of. I didn't want to end up there as I saw so many people, even old people, who were still doing what I was doing as a young pre-teenage boy. And I said, this is not going to be my destiny. So as I got out of that, I went to work at a school and became a janitor. Well, that wasn't a, a, a cush job, but it paid twice as much as 45 cents an hour. I mean, I was making 90 cents an hour, and I was in the big time. I had moved up. From there, I, I was playing on the varsity football team in a town that had 85% Hispanics, 85% Hispanics. And I was the only Hispanic on our varsity football team. Why is that? Because I wouldn't quit. I got close, but I wouldn't quit. And there was so much pressure exerted on us to quit for a variety of reasons, and I won't go into that. For myself personally, I, I was pulled and not even allowed to play in a game where we were leading hugely. We were the number four ranked team in the state. 
And I was on the bench until 20 seconds to play in that game. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going to do this. And I almost quit. And I urge you people who are listening to me, don't quit. Because quitting becomes a habit. And it becomes an easy habit to get into. But a hard habit to get out of. Yeah. So go through the adversity. Go through the tough time. You'll get through it. I promise you that. Made it through that. Wound up in the Air Force. I joined the Air Force and made a career out of it. It was a glorious experience. Why? Because I had mentors who helped me along, who showed me what my self-worth was, who got me involved in going to school to get an education, who got me involved in getting into other jobs that would give me more responsibility. And eventually I wound up making a career, and it was a fantastic career that set me up perfectly for when I retired from the Air Force. Great. Now, I'm going to pause there for a second because I'm going to get into my story and it's going to get deep. Yeah. But I want to back up. Right before I retired, my daughter, my number two daughter, was born with a diaphragmatic hernia. And the doctor said she wouldn't live through the night. And if she did, she would not make it past a couple of days. Well, they took her into immediate surgery. And all I did and all my wife did was we whispered into her ears and said, You've got this. You can do this. Nothing can stop you. You're more powerful than this. And we just kept telling her that. Now, she was only hours old, but she had inside of her what we all have inside of us, that ability to conquer. We don't know it, maybe, but it was there. And we whispered that to her. Now, the docs took her into surgery. When they brought her out, they said she may not make it through the week. And if she does, she'll be in the hospital for at least the next 16 months, a year and a half. And if she makes it through that, she, she'll be lethargic because she won't be able to keep up with the other kids and she'll be small and she'll have learning disabilities. She didn't believe any of that stuff. Graduated summa cum laude with her undergrad and her master's, was a national championship writer on the equestrian team for Texas Tech, the only one for the Big 12 to go to the national championships. This kid's a winner. Everybody's a winner. I tell you this to focus backwards so everybody listening can understand that it's already in you. And so now let's go forward. So I'm out of the Air Force. I'm working for an engineering firm. Uh, did some great things. Got promoted a couple of times. Was making more money than I could even believe was even possible for me. <laughs> and wound up at the corporate office. Great story, right? I'm thinking, here's this little kid who almost quit from a tiny little town who used to make 45 cents an hour. Now I'm working on multi-billion dollar yeah. government contracts like and women, not one or two but 17 of those so wow i had to pinch myself and then in 2004 i was diagnosed with renal cell cancer kidney cancer and given a prognosis of two months incurable cancer stage four terminal when you hear that it wakes you up yeah it scares you. it'll scare you and I looked at it, I said, well, this is a mountain, and maybe it's the last mountain. Maybe it's a mountain too big for me to even challenge. But I had to quickly shake that out of my head because I couldn't afford to, to believe that. The first doctor, the first hospital said, go home and get your affairs in order because there's nothing we can do. So I asked for another opinion. See, sometimes when you face a mountain, all of you listening to this, ask somebody else. Somebody else has been through stuff. And maybe they can help you. If they can't, maybe they can refer you to somebody who can. Well, he reluctantly referred me to another hospital who told me the same thing. There's nothing we can do. Third hospital, same answer. There's nothing we can do. Go home and get your affairs in order. Now, I was given two months to live at that first diagnosis, the first prognosis, two months. And by now, five weeks had gone by. You know that the it sands was close. of the yeah. cancer, they're going pretty fast. But fortunately, I wound up at MD Anderson, which is the top cancer center in the world. They called me. I didn't call them. Now, you talk about coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in gut incidents. Yeah. And so they yes. called me and said, hey, we've got, your, we've got your case referred to us. We want you to come in. We want to talk to you. I met the number one doc that specializes in uh, renal cell carcinoma. And he said to me, they're right. There's nothing they can do. But... Oh, don't you love butts? Yes. But, but we're a research hospital, and I've been studying this, and I think I might be able to help you. I don't know if you'll get another six months or maybe a year, but that's better than two months. Mm-hmm. 
So I got involved in a study, a very unique study, because there was no chemo, there was no radiation, there was no approach that works on this kind of cancer. At that point, there was none at all. So we tried this experimental uh, immunotherapy, and my God, look at me, you know, I made it through that. Six years I made it through that, and on the sixth year, we were celebrating, and they came back with a vengeance. Stage four, terminal, metastasized in my lungs. Now, this is the second time, right? Well, they can't remove my lungs, so what am I going to do? Well, we started another experimental study with some experimental chemo, and um, it was pretty tough. Let me tell you, it was really tough, but we beat that after almost a three-year battle. Then it came back in one lung. Fourth time, it came back in my ribs on the right-hand side. The fifth time, in my kidney, my liver, and my pancreas on my left-hand side. And then the sixth time, it came back in my spinal column. Four tumors stacked up, eating away at my spinal column. Mm. You think that's not a mountain? <laughs> that's not a mountain. That's a whole series of mountains. That's a mountain range. That's a mountain here, side. <laughs> absolutely. But this is what I think. I, I think that when, when, you're, when you're facing an adversity, whatever it is, and it could be small. I mean, some people have small ones that they feel is big. Whatever it is for you, it could be a major, major adversity. For me, it was life-threatening. I, I knew that I had to go up that mountain to the peak. So once I got on the peak, I could peek over to see what was available for me. Mm. So I had to peak to peak. Get it? Yes. But I had to, got, had to conquer that mountain. Uh, Michael Jordan said, when, when you face a mountain, you know, do whatever you have to do to go through it, under it, over or around it. Just get to the other end because there's glory on the other end. And, and, and who was it that said, uh, Jim Rowan said, when, when the end comes for you, make sure they find you not sliding down an old mountain, but climbing up a new mountain. So I knew that every time the cancer came, I had to go up another mountain, find a way to get to the top to see what was available to be able to fight this six times now it's been four well almost 14 years january will be 14 years that i was given a two-month sentence mm. isn't god good mm, yeah yes yes yeah oh hold it right, now, hold, it right there, John. hold it right there john because you 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 are burning you are burning up the airwaves with this story your people are are chiming in gwen cunningham out of uh, georgia is saying but god uh, what a testimony. We've got Ella Moody from Texas saying, so inspiring, John. God bless you. Great story. we got Pamela Staples Ward here in Chicago saying, good point, John. Amen. Uh, Ali Joseph says, don't quit. Uh, great, 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 great story. And, and you touched on the word, the one word, but. And I like to touch on the word, the two words, but God. Because each and every time, Someone said, no, you kept saying, get another opinion. You kept saying, no, you kept saying, let's get another one. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. Because as you said earlier, I, I think there was something inside of you that was saying, uh-uh, no, that's not the final word. And you kept going till you got that but God moment. So for, for some of the people who may not be as strong as you, how do, how do you get them to move past that first rejection? Because that's what it was. Somebody was saying that you were about to be rejected. You were about to expire. You were about to no longer be here. How do you get them past that first rejection into the point of saying, but, or even saying, but God, each and every time a mountain comes their way? By doing what I'm doing right now. See, I realized that I was living in my passion. I, engineering was my passion. I was making money. I was doing great things for great companies. It was my passion, and I was passionate about it. But it wasn't my purpose. See, my purpose was to go spread some news that you're more powerful than your mountain if you do not doubt. You see? And I don't tell people my story to impress them about how, how strong I am or how I was able to get through this, but to impress upon them how they have the same capability if they'll only trust and do not doubt. I'm on a mission, and it's not my mission. I'm along for the ride. I'm the vessel. Yeah. But I'm here. I'm fortunate. How do I, how do I share with them when they face <clears throat> that brick wall? By telling them, hey, listen, I'm here. I've done this. 
this is how I did it. This is how I set my mindset. This is all the different things that I did along the way. But at, even with all those strategies, the one key factor was do not doubt. Do not doubt. It's going to be hard. Chemo's hard. I do chemo a lot. It's hard. My hair was jet black. It's white now from chemo. I lost the body hair from my eyelashes down to my toes. That was hard. Life is hard. Lots of series of hard things happen. To some people, it might be losing a job or a relationship. That may be the most difficult thing they go through. Nevertheless, it is difficult. I For me, this was the hardest thing I had to do. I've done a lot of hard things along the way in my life. One of the hardest things I ever do is look in the mirror. I mean, that, that's pretty <laughs> tough. <laughs> but I was born with it, so I have to live. To, you know, I have to live with it. But the bottom line is, this is the journey that I'm in. It is now my purpose that I'm passionate about. So I share with people, hey, listen, you don't don't give up. We're all going to die one in at one point in our lives. All of us, all of us leave here. In the meantime, while you're here, do some great things. Do some incredible things. And you have it in you. Even if you're going through something life-altering like a cancer event or any other kind of event, a divorce, a, a financial collapse, or whatever it is that you're going through in your life, it is what it is. You have the power to go through it. And so that's my story. That's how I share with them to try to inspire them. And then I follow up with them. When we were at the RGV a few weeks ago, I met some incredible people there. And I have been in contact with a huge number of them who have asked me to to converse with them, to help them, to inspire them, to do whatever I can to help them or help their family member. And I'm more than willing to. Why? Well, two months has now turned to 14 years. And it's like I told my doc, you might give me two months, I'm taking 47 years. So I've got some time to share. Yeah, I love it. You know what, and, and we're talking to John Garcia of John Garcia Unlimited on the Unstoppable Story Show with Terrence Lefters. You, you guys, you were watching on Facebook Live. You're also listening on Blog Talk Radio. If you have a question or if you have a statement, go ahead and put it in the comments section. John is being able to see his feed as well, and I'm sure he'll be blessed by your comments. Uh, we've got a lot of people that are chiming in. Uh, Sharon Johnson Lefrich, who you met, my lovely wife, says there were amazing people down in the Rio Grande Valley. Patsy Gomez says she loves you, brother. Gwen Cunningham is saying don't give up, go through it. Uh, we've got Leonora Olvera. He says this is my brother. He never gives up. He's my inspiration. And that's what I felt when I was with you down in the RGV and when I was hearing your story and I was seeing the faces of people in that room. They really were inspired by your story. They really were uh, feeling that if you can do it, then they can do it too. But I want to flip back to 20, 2004 because I don't think, and you correct me if I'm wrong, you were a inspirational, motivational speaker in 2004 when you got that first diagnosis. Is that correct? Actually, kind of, sort of. That's a weird answer, but let me explain. I had retired recently uh, in 97 from the United States Air Force. I was working in corporate America, and I was speaking to at-risk youth groups who were imprisoned, and I was doing it for free. Okay. I didn't realize that you could speak for fee and not for free. Well, <laughs> the money is important to me because it's a business, but that's not the driver. For me, the driver is, what can I do to help somebody out? Now, there's something that I didn't tell you that I want to really quickly jump on okay. and jump back to whatever question you have. You mentioned Nora Olvera and Patsy Gomez. Yes. And there's several other people on this. I've been watching the feed. I have 14 brothers and sisters. I didn't tell you that before. 14 brothers and sisters. Yeah, I saw well, in I your bio brothers. that you came, uh, well, at least right. in bio from this book, that uh, it was a family of... Nine brothers and five sisters, is that correct? Nine brothers, five sisters, and mom and dad in a two-bedroom, little tiny house with one bathroom. Yeah. On the feed, I've seen several of my brothers and sisters. Uh, Raymond's on there. Andy's on there. My cousin Albert. I saw uh, Nora. I saw Patsy. Thank you for coming on, folks. This is a blessing to me for you to be on this show as well. Terrence, back to you. Ask me any question. I'll answer it as best and, I can. And, and I want to say thank you to, 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 to the family for being on there as well, because John 
is my brother from another mother. We really bonded down in the RGV. He is so authentic. He is so accommodating. And again, this is not the face of a six-time cancer victim because he is a cancer conqueror. But let's go back to what you were saying. I want to pull back to what you were talking about, that thing that's inside of you. Because as I, as I coach mm -hmm. my clients and as I speak and uh, around the country, I always tell people that you've got something inside of you and it's called that purpose. But he doesn't tell you what it is at birth. Because if he told you what your purpose was at birth and he gave you free will on top of that, you might be tempted not to follow your purpose. So he, he, t he puts it deep down inside of you. He hides it from you and he gives you little glimpses of it through your visions, through your dreams and through your experiences. And it's funny that you would say in 2004, before you got that first diagnosis, you were already walking somewhat in the purpose that you fully walk in now. You had that seed inside of you to share a message with other people, even before you was hit with this traumatic six time battle. So what was it about talking to the at youth risk then before you got this diagnosis that was spawning you to do what you did? I saw in them what I saw in myself. Now, let me explain that because my family's watching and they may not, in fact, I know they don't know this story. See, I was a depressed kid when I was growing up. I was popular. I played on the football team. You know, I had friends. Uh, I, but I was depressed because I thought I was going to be stuck in that environment, in that little town, working and not ever making anything of myself. And I had to find a way to get out. I did. I'm fortunate. I'm very fortunate, and I'm very grateful. I see in some of these youth who have done the things that they've done a mirror image of what I was feeling. I didn't go steal cars. I didn't sell drugs and things like that. But they feel like they're at the end of their wits and they can't get out of it. And sometimes you have to believe in somebody else's belief in you until your own belief kicks in. And I think that's where I come in and that's where I came in then. You mentioned a second ago about how you tell your clients when you're coaching them that they have this inside of them, but they may not know what it is. No, Les Brown calls it greatness. You have greatness in yes. you. My yes. favorite book says, your body's a temple and he resides in that temple. So if he resides there, well, that's pretty much greatness, isn't it? Yes. So, and, and, and then going back to your point, you said that, some, that he doesn't tell you what it is and you have to work through it to get to it. And sometimes it takes a long time to find what your purpose is. Yes. It reminds me of the story of the Chinese bamboo tree. Yeah. Uh, for those of the, those folks who are on the call who've never heard this story, the Chinese bamboo tree, the seed is planted in the ground and watered every day for a year. And after a year, nothing. Nothing. And they keep watering it because they know something. The farmer knows something. And they water it for the, every day for the next year, still nothing. Third year, water it every day, still nothing. Fourth year, Nothing. In the fifth year, fifth year, the Chinese bamboo tree finally breaks the ground and it grows up to 30 inches, almost three feet every single day to grow in one month, 90 feet tall. Mm. Now, the question is, did the Chinese bamboo tree grow 90 feet in 30 days or did it grow 90 feet in five years? And what was happening inside the ground? for five years to support that 90 foot height. This root system that was incredibly massive and strong was being built because something that tall with the wind blowing and all cannot sustain unless it has a good foundation. Same with us, unless your foundation is there and, and you may not have a good foundation, but you can always build it. I'm a construction guy. I'm a civil engineer type by trade. Foundations are important and sometimes foundations crack and break and you can repair them or rebuild them. And it's like that in life.